Hey everyone, and welcome back to Pixel Perfect. If you've ever wanted to master GSAP's scroll trigger but found yourself lost in a sea of confusing tutorials, then you are definitely in the right place. In our last video, we broke down GSAP timelines and the magic of nesting them together. Well, today we're taking the next big leap. We're diving deep into the most complete GSAP scroll trigger guide you'll find. We're starting from the absolute fundamentals and climbing all the way up to advanced techniques that will completely transform your web animations. We are going to cover it all. I'll show you the debugging tricks most guides skip, demystify the start and end parameters, and explore toggle actions for real-world use. We'll integrate timelines in mind-blowing ways, create buttery smooth scrub animations, and craft sticky pin effects that feel like magic. Plus, we'll harness powerful callbacks for truly complex interactions. So get your code editor ready. If you're new here, consider subscribing to join our community of developers. Now let's build some scroll trigger magic together. Now before we jump into the JavaScript, let me quickly walk you through this HTML structure. We have a main container here with the class Canvas. Think of this as our main stage where all the animation magic will happen. Inside, we have two different types of sections. First, we have these space sections. These are basically just empty areas that create some breathing room in our layout. Then in the middle, we have a stack section. This is where our actual content lives. And right now, it contains a single box with the letter A inside. So the overall structure is really simple. We have space, then our content box, then more space, creating a nice vertical rhythm that's perfect for scroll-based animations. This clean setup will make perfect sense once we start animating with GSAP. This layout uses Flexbox and Grid to create a clean, centered design that's ready for our GSAP animations. All right, now it's time to dive into GSAP scroll trigger. First things first, we need to set up our foundation. I'm adding the GSAP core library and the scroll trigger plugin via CDN in our HTML. You can see I'm including three script tags here. The first one loads GSAP itself, the second brings in the scroll trigger plugin, and the third links to our own app.js file where we'll write our custom code. Now let's jump into our app.js file. The very first thing I always do is register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. I'm wrapping this in a DOM content loaded event to make sure everything is ready before we start animating. So I'm calling gsap.register plugin and passing in scroll trigger. This tells GSAP, hey, we're going to use this plugin and sets up all the magic behind the scenes. With just these few lines, we're now ready to start creating some incredible scroll-driven animations. The foundation is laid and we're good to go. Now let me walk you through this basic scroll trigger setup. This is where the magic begins. First. I'm using gsap.2, which means I'm animating elements to these new values. I'm targeting all elements with the class box inside the scroll trigger object. Here's what each option does. The trigger is set to dot stack. This means our animation will activate when the entire stack section enters the viewport. It's like setting a motion sensor on that element. Start top bottom means start the animation when the top of our trigger element hits the bottom of the viewport. So when the stack section first comes into view from the bottom, that's our green light. I've set markers, true, which is incredibly helpful for debugging. This shows colored markers on the page so you can visually see where your animation starts and ends. I always use this while building. Now for the actual animation properties, I'm moving the boxes 300 pixels on the X axis over three seconds with a smooth easing curve. So to summarize, when you scroll and the stack section enters the viewport, box will smoothly slide 300 pixels to the right over three seconds. It's that simple to get started. Now let's really master the start parameter. This is where you gain precise control over when your animation triggers. The start parameter has two parts separated by a space. The first part refers to your trigger element and the second part refers to the viewport. Let me show you what each of these examples means. 0%, 100% is exactly the same as top-bottom. This means when the top of our stack container reaches the bottom of the viewport. 50%, 60% means when the middle of our stack container reaches 60% down the viewport, so it triggers a bit earlier. Center, 60VH, 
uses mixed units. This means when the center of our stack reaches 60 viewport height units from the top. Bottom bottom means when the bottom of our stack hits the bottom of the viewport, so it triggers quite late in the scroll. 100% 100% means when the bottom of our stack reaches the bottom of the viewport. Now here's a powerful one. Top equals minus 200 pixels, 50% equals minus 200 pixels uses relative offsets. This means when the top of our stack minus 200 pixels reaches the middle of the viewport minus 200 pixels. The first part always controls your trigger element and the second part controls the viewport position. You can mix percentages, pixels, viewport units, and even relative values. This gives you incredible precision to time your animations perfectly with the user's scroll journey. Now let's explore two incredibly powerful features that give you fine-grained control over your scroll animations, toggle actions, and toggle class. First, toggle actions lets you define exactly what happens at four different scroll moments. Think of it as setting behaviors for when you enter, leave, come back, and leave again. The four positions are on enter, on leave, on enter back, and on leave back. In our example, play pause resume reset means play when the animation first enters the viewport, pause when it scrolls out of view, resume when you scroll back into it, continues from where it paused, reset when you scroll past it again, jumps back to start. This creates really intuitive user experiences, like pausing an animation when it's not visible and resuming right where it left off. Now for toggle class. This automatically adds and removes classes based on scroll position. In our case, when the box enters the trigger area, it gets the active class, making it orange. And when it leaves, the class is removed. So with just these two features, you can create complex interactive behaviors that respond perfectly to the user's scroll position, all without writing any custom JavaScript logic for the scroll events. Now we're leveling up to combine timelines with scroll trigger. This is where you can create truly sophisticated animation sequences. First, I'm creating a timeline just like we learned before, but with one crucial difference. I'm setting it to paused true. This means the timeline won't play automatically. It's waiting for scroll trigger to control it. Notice I'm putting the scroll trigger configuration directly inside the timeline creation. This tells GSAP, hey, Control this entire timeline based on the user's scroll position. The scroll trigger setup is similar to what we saw earlier with our toggle action set to play pause resume reset for that smooth interactive feel. Now here's where the magic happens. I'm building a multi-step animation sequence on our timeline. First, the box rotates 90 degrees and moves right over two seconds. Then it rotates to 180 degrees and moves down over one second. Then it rotates back to 90 degrees and returns to the left over two seconds. Finally, it completes the circle by rotating back to zero and moving up over one second. The beautiful part, since we have toggle action set to play, pause, resume, reset, but no scrub parameter, the timeline will behave quite differently. When you scroll down and hit the trigger point, the entire timeline plays through once from start to finish over its total duration. It doesn't sync with your scroll position at all. If you scroll away, it pauses, and if you scroll back, it resumes from where it paused. But there's no smooth scrubbing through the animation timeline. And that's where the scrub parameter completely transforms the experience. Let me walk through what's happening in this corrected setup. Now that I've added scrub, true, the timeline becomes directly tied to the scroll position. This means as you scroll down, the box moves through its entire animation sequence in perfect sync with your scroll bar. And if you scroll back up, it smoothly reverses through the steps. I've also added an end parameter this time set to bottom 20%. This creates a defined scroll range where the animation happens. It means stop the animation when the bottom of our box reaches 20% from the top of the viewport. So the complete scroll range is start when the top of the box hits 80% down the viewport end, when the bottom of the box hits 20% down the viewport. Between these two points, the entire four-step timeline scrubs perfectly, giving you that professional scroll-linked animation that feels so satisfying to use.
plus the toggle class still works beautifully, automatically adding the active class when we're within the scroll trigger range, making our box turn orange exactly when the animation is active. This combination of scrub with start and end parameters gives you pinpoint control over both the timing and the visual feedback of your scroll animations. You noticed something really important there? While our box is animating beautifully based on scroll position, it's also scrolling away with the rest of the page, which can make complex animations feel rushed or hard to follow. That's exactly where the pin parameter comes to the rescue. When I add pin, true to our scroll trigger configuration, something magical happens. The box becomes sticky during its animation sequence. Here's what this means in practice. As soon as you scroll to our start position, where the top of the box hits the center of the viewport, the box stops scrolling with the page and stays fixed in place, pinned right where it is. Now, while the box is pinned, you can scroll through the entire animation sequence, watching it rotate and move smoothly, thanks to our scrub parameter, but the box itself doesn't travel up or down with your scrolling. Only when you reach our end position, where the bottom of the box would hit the top of the viewport, does the pin release and the box resumes normal scrolling. This combination of pin plus scrub creates that professional, immersive animation experience where users can focus entirely on your animation without fighting against the page scroll. Now for the bonus round. When you're working with scroll animations, sometimes you need to trigger custom logic at specific moments, and GSAP Scroll Trigger has you completely covered with powerful callbacks. Let me walk you through these lifecycle events. On enter fires when the trigger element first enters the start position, perfect for logging analytics or triggering secondary animations. On leave triggers when the element scrolls past the endpoint, great for cleanup tasks or pausing resources. On enter back happens when you scroll backwards into the trigger area, useful for reversing your entry logic. On leave back fires when you scroll backwards, past the start point, ideal for resetting states. But here are my favorites. On update runs continuously while scrubbing, giving you real-time progress updates, perfect for custom progress bars or dynamic calculations. On toggle triggers whenever the active state changes, whether entering or leaving, giving you a single place to handle state changes. On refresh fires when the page resizes or loads, ensuring your scroll calculations stay perfect across all devices. Imagine using these to place sounds on enter, track user engagement, or even coordinate multiple animations across your page, all while maintaining that buttery smooth scrub and pin experience we built. These callbacks transform your animations from visual effects into fully interactive experiences that can respond intelligently to user behavior. All right, let's recap the powerful GSAP scroll trigger features we covered today. We started with basic scroll triggers, then mastered start and end positioning, toggle actions, and class toggling. We leveled up to timeline animations, smooth scrubbing, professional pinning, and powerful callbacks for complete scroll control. You're now equipped to create stunning scroll animations that will make your websites unforgettable. If this helped you, let me know what you're building in the comments and subscribe for more animation deep dives. Thanks for watching, keep creating amazing things, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Happy coding.